So next I'm going to talk about airfoil selection and also show you guys how to plot airfoils using coordinates because that's pretty useful. Um, it's just a useful skill to know. Um, it's not just airfoils, it's plotting any curve with coordinates in SOLIDWORKS. Um, so a tool or a website that we use is airfoiltools.com and it has a lot of data on just a bunch of airfoils um, complete with you know um, the points for the airfoil. Here's a data file of X and Y coordinates and down here we have a series of graphs for the performance of the airfoil at different um, Reynolds numbers. I'll go into that in a little bit. Um, so I guess the quick and dirty for Formula SAE is the more camber you have on your airfoil, um, the more lift you will produce generally, you know, up to a certain point. So camber is defined as um, the curvature of this line. So the more curved it is or the more convex or concave it is, the more downforce you can produce due to the change in momentum of air as it goes over the airfoil. But obviously if the camber line is too extreme, so for example, if you follow my mouse and it goes like this, um, you're asking the air to bend around such a sharp um, radius that you're gonna have flow separation. So obviously you have to keep the camber line within reason. This airfoil I have pulled up is the Epler 420. We actually use this on the car. It's our front wing second element and the rear wing um, second and third elements. So this is the profile that we use. Um, down here on airfoil tools, there's similar airfoils you can look at, which is helpful in comparing. So actually this guy, um, the CH10 airfoil, we used on the rear wing main element last year. And that's what it looks like. Um, let's see, in terms of comparing airfoils, you can go to the airfoil comparison tool down here and you just select the right airfoils. So let's do the Epler 420, EP 420. And another really good one for Formula SAE, it's really commonly used, is the S1223. S1223. Uh, and finally, I'm going to compare these two airfoils to um, a more symmetrical one, maybe one that you might find on an airfoil. So I'll, s oh, perfect, Boeing 737 root airfoil. All right, um, so let me just isolate this Boeing 737 airfoil so you guys can see the difference. So as you can see, um, this is the camber line and it's not as concave at all as the previous ones, right? Um, so intuitively, you'll think this um, generates not as much lift, which we'll see on the graphs over there. Um, but uh, yeah, I just brought that up for comparison. Let's see, coming back here under the comparison, uh, it gets a little confusing using this um, website, but as soon as you do it a couple times, you'll get used to it. Um, you have data points for each of the airfoils. So we have the Epler 420, S1223, and the Boeing 737 airfoil at different Reynolds numbers. Um, for those of you who haven't taken fluids yet, Reynolds number is a non-dimensionalized number um, that's representative of um, sort of how much turbulence you can expect or the flow behavior um, at different um, levels of turbulence and viscosity. Um, in general, for Formula SAE, um, we're going to have very high Reynolds numbers because the higher the number, the more turbulence you have. And if you can imagine our car with all its suspension rods and open wheels and things like that, um, there's plenty of turbulence around the car. So I'm just going to deselect the plots um, at these lower Reynolds numbers because it makes more sense to compare high Reynolds numbers um, for our circumstance. Or um, performance at high Reynolds numbers is what matters more in our circumstance. Update plots, and then I should have three different curves per plot down here. Perfect. Um, so I'm going to focus on this guy. This is the coefficient of lift versus alpha plot, and as you can see, um, so over here is going to be lift, and then down here is alpha, or your angle of attack of the wing. Um, so as the angle of attack increases, your lift increases, um, which you can expect. Um, you'll see that these two, there's two airfoils up here that um, have a very high coefficient of lift, you know, above two at its max angle of attack, and this one down lower. And you'll see that this um, lower one that produces less downforce is going to be the Boeing 737 airfoil. These next two, I think this uh, brown one will be the Epler 420, and the green one is gonna be the S1223. So S1223 is like green, Epler 420 brown. And just, um, you know, um, from looking at this graph, you can see that these two airfoils at any given angle of attack will have a greater coefficient of lift. And um, if drag isn't a concern, because unfortunately, um, 
as your lift increases, your drag also increases, as you can see on this coefficient of lift versus drag plot. Um, um, but in FSAE, because our speeds are so slow, um, in general, you don't have to worry about drag as much, so you can just aim to maximize downforce. And so that's a little bit of the process into um, how we chose our airfoils um, for last year's car. Next, let's say you want to plot these airfoils. Um, you want to download all the coordinates as this dat file. So you can click source dat file over here. Um, you might even be able to just copy and paste it from um, this, what do you call it, from this little window. But I'm just going to click this guy and I'm going to save this whole page as, um, as a text document. Okay, so I actually have it saved already. I'm just going to delete it. All right, e420.txt. And you need to open it in Excel and reformat it a little bit. All right, desktop. It's going to be a text file, this guy. So next you're gonna, this is the import wizard for Excel. So this is all our data. Um, it's gonna be delimited. So basically you're saying there's a certain character that separates the data into rows or columns, etc. So hit next. And this is where you select your delimiter. So the default is tab delimited, saying there's a tab between all the data points, but we, we actually just have a space. So once you hit space, there you go, you'll see the columns show up. And this is what you want because then your data will come in um, in individual columns. You just hit next and finish. This is just specifying the format for the data, um, but it doesn't really matter because it's all just decimal points. It's not dates or anything or times, so you can just import it as a general format. Great. Um, so we have it in. I'm going to take away this X, like extra information over here. We don't need it. I'm just going to move all the points to the first two columns. Cut. Paste. Um, you'll note that, um, so this would be x coordinates, this would be y coordinates. You'll note that there's a little gap here, and this gap is from airfoil tools um, separating this airfoil into the top half and the bottom half, um, or vice versa, just um, in general separating it into two halves. When you import a curve into SOLIDWORKS, you want it to be one continuous surface. It makes things much easier um, for a variety of things from um, you know, setting up your geometry to meshing um, to exporting files, things like that. Um, so we want to manipulate this data a little bit to um, have this top half line up perfectly with this bottom half. So I'm just going to hit cut and then paste it over here before we reformat, reformat it. You'll see that the start point is over here, like 0 0.003, 0 0.00128. That's shared. And then down here, it ends at 10, which is also shared. Um, so if we want to line it up, we want to uh, put all these points um, into this column, but reversed. Um, there's an Excel function to do that. You can just look it up online. I think I remember it more or less as uh, it's like equals index, and then you select your rows. Um, sorry, one one second. Um, I'm actually going to put. Hmm, We're gonna have a start point here, and then an end point is gonna be all this data reversed. Um, I want the start point actually to be at one zero, this um, trailing edge. If you think of X and Y, at X equals roughly zero, you're gonna be at the front of the airfoil, and at X equals one, you wanna be at the tail. Um, so I'm gonna cut this and put it over here. Oh, shit. Put it over here. Um, so this data, I wanna reverse all these guys equals um, index, you highlight all these. Okay, index, and then comma rows, highlight the same column again. Um, an interesting part of the formula is you need to place dollar signs to tell um, Excel that the data doesn't change per entry. So put dollar signs in front of each entry for index and then under rows you just put a dollar sign in front of the last number here um, I don't really understand it I just looked it up online um, so let's see we have 
34 entries. We got one more there. And so we end at 0 0.003 like that. Should be able to drag this formula over. And all we have to do is just change the row. We want to highlight row H instead of row G or column H instead of column G. So H, H. There. And then we have all this data. We can just put it um, back in. So I'm gonna, I think I can just cut and paste. Perfect. So you see, we start at one zero, we end at one zero. So it's a continuous curve. And then in the middle over here, we have these two points, 0 0.0003. Um, these two repeat, so we can just delete one of the rows. We don't need to duplicate a point. Great. So you have your x coordinate, your y. Finally, you need a z coordinate. So I'm just going to put 0 down all of this, um, just because SolidWorks takes in the coordinates in 3D. And once you have that, you're good to go to export. Um, you don't have to worry about this data. You actually don't want to delete it um, because all these formulas over here reference this data. Um, either way, SOLIDWORKS only reads the first three columns of points, so you're good to go to export this um, as the right file type. So save as, uh, save it as a text, um, let's see, tab delimited file. Do you want to replace it? Yeah, I'll replace it. There's going to be this little error message that pops up. So the first time, go ahead and click, click yes to save the file. Next, um, this kind of threw me off a bunch of times when I was like doing this on my own originally. When you exit Excel, don't save the text file. Um, otherwise, if you save it, it'll save it as an Excel format, and then everything um, becomes, uh, what do you call it, um, incompatible with SOLIDWORKS. So don't save. Next, you can come into SOLIDWORKS, and you should be able to import that file. I'm going to create a new drawing. Um, actually, you don't need to create a sketch. You just go to Insert. Uh, I think it's Curve. Curve through XYZ points. Um, go to Browse, and you select the file that you just saved from Excel, or the, the, the text file. You should see all these points show up. And it looks like our units are small. We're in millimeters and change it to inches. Zoom in. And there's our airfoil. Um, so now this curve is, for some reason, stationary in SOLIDWORKS. It's pretty hard to manipulate. The easiest way to manipulate it is to then select the plane. Um, we know we're on the XY plane, so we're aligned XY over here. I'll just select this front plane. And we can convert this um, curve onto a manipulatable sketch by hitting Convert Entities. That is, that's sort of like a projection. You're projecting that um, this curve onto the sketch over here. Right now, it's still a solid black line. If you try to drag it around, it says, cannot drag. The selected item is fixed. You just have to delete the relation. And you should get exactly this, which is your airfoil, which has a single point at the trailing edge. And you can drag it around, resize it, re-angle it however you want. Um, for our applications, we want it um, upside down compared to an airplane. So I'm just going to mirror it. Boom. All right. And then once we have that, we can get started on um, manipulating it. Uh, in terms of um, before, I, before we go to the next step, there's actually a little secret I had, or not really a secret, but something I um, you guys should know about. Um, we have a bunch of airfoil profiles saved on Google Drive for you guys. Um, so they're good to go, ready to import into SOLIDWORKS, and you can mess with them as you as you wish. So it's in Triton Racing, uh, TR20, uh, Design, Aero, and it's in CFD info slash re references. Over here, you'll see airfoil profiles. Don't worry about this yet. I'll get in, into it um, in a future video. But airfoil profiles, you have a ton of them. So you have the S1223. This is the NACA 4412, Epler 420 that we just generated. Um, what else? Over here, you have these airfoils that start with BE. These are benzing airfoils, and I highly recommend you guys look into using them in the future. They were designed by an Italian, I think, race car driver, race car engineer, and Instead of unlike airfoils that we're repurposing for um, a car, these are designed exactly for race vehicles in mind. I think it was designed for F1. 
So if you search Benzing airfoils, you'll see this website. It's an Italian website and it has all these profiles that Enrico Benzing generated. I experimented with these a little bit and this one seems pretty promising, the 122, 155 as a rear wing element. So maybe look into that. Um, these are all the coordinates um, expressed in like percentages. And yeah, and you don't have to translate it from, um, what do you call it? You don't have to translate it from this website. It's all um, provided in this folder. I think there's also a little readme here. Nice, cool. There's a little readme um, on sort of the setup into SolidWorks that I'll be going into uh, in the next video. All right, so that's how you um, insert a curve using XYZ points in SolidWorks.